Hello, folks. How's it going? Good to see y'all today. We are back with Pokemon Yellow. Very excited. Um, today is Sunday, which is lovely. I've had a lovely day so far. Had a really bright and sunny morning. Um, I went to the store. Um, I just washed some produce that we got from the store. So it's been a really great start to my day. So where we left off was we are about to go into the Safari Zone here. Now, I never exactly remember how to get through this place, um, so we might have to go through twice. But for those that don't know, the Safari Zone is just like an open area here um, where you pay a little bit of money and you get to just catch as many Pokemon as you want. Um, which is, and there are some awesome Pokemon that you can only catch in here, but they're really hard to catch. Um, and it says you can run out of time. You don't actually run out of time. The system of time that it gives you, there's, it's the evolution music in here. It's very kind of anxiety inducing. So there are a few of these houses. There are these, there's this grass around, there's some water. Um, but there's a bunch of different areas, and each area you can find different Pokemon. We are trying to find specific items in here that you need to progress through the game. Um, but see, you see that counter up there. <laughs> um, it says 483 out of 500. It's not actual timer, it's based on steps. So I just took three steps, so now it's 480. Um... So usually to get to the items that you're looking for at the end, ooh, Parasect. Um, we found Paris in Mount Moon, and this is the evolved form of Paris. Um, yeah, see they can run away really quick. You can't actually use your Pokemon to fight these Pokemon. Um, there's a little bit of a different system since they're like completely free, basically. Um, they give you these special Pokeballs called Safari Balls. Yes, and here's a Nidoran. We've seen a Nidoran before. Oops, I did not mean to throw that, but... Um, yeah, even Nidoran. Uh, and you can also throw bait. And I don't remember exactly... I think the bait, like, distracts them, but makes them harder to catch. And, like, the rock makes them maybe more likely to run away, but easier to catch. I think. Um, that's kind of how the system works. But usually if I find a really... Yeah, Nidoran ran. Nidoran ran. Nidoran ran. Nidoran ran, 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 ran. Um, <laughs> something took over me there. Um, so yeah, you can't use your Pokemon in battle here. Um, ah, X-Egg cute. X-Seed cute, as someone pointed out last stream. Um, there we go. Yeah, we're not really planning on using Execute, but... It's fun to catch one. Um, but I think what I was saying was when you find a really rare Pokemon, I try not to... And see, there's kind of like a winding... These winding paths. Carbos is really good. It is like a vitamin that you can give your Pokemon to increase, it, to increase its speed. Um, I'll probably use that soon. Um, but there's a lot of items scattered through here. Um, we are trying to get through... Ooh, Tauros. Tauros is a really good Pokemon. Again, hard to catch. Um, like right there, bust it out first, and then it ran away. Um, usually when I find like a good or rare Pokemon in here, I will just start throwing balls. Because you never know when they're just gonna run away and screw you. Um... So maybe I'll be able to pull double duty, pick up some of these items, and get the items we need to progress. Oh, there's an item up there. Oh, that's gonna annoy me. I'll leave it in there. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, those of you who are completionists... Ooh, Egg Bomb. That's an interesting move. Not many Pokémon can learn it. I think only Chansey and Execute's Evolved Form Executor. I think they are the only ones that can actually use that move. Um, I'm going to make my wife a little faster. Because I love my wife. I cherish my wife. I give my wife Carbos. 
Um, here, I don't remember if there's an item in here, but I'm gonna check. No, there's not. Just a dead end. Oh yeah, I pretty much just guaranteed we're not gonna be able to <laughs> make it out in one go. <laughs> we'll have to come again, but that's okay. Ooh, Kangaskhan. Uh, I think we saw Giovanni use one of these um, in our first battle against him. And this is rounds away. That's what I'm saying. Some of these more, some of these rarer Pokemon are just really hard to catch. Um, and yeah, I do, for the most part, remember how to get through here. Um, it's kind of a maze, but... Um, you need to get two items at the end. A protein. That is a lot like a Carbos, but instead of raising speed, it raises attack. So here, we have 98 steps left. I actually think we'll be able to make it. Um, because I think we're pretty close. I'm going to use this protein so I know we have enough room. I'll use it on Bony. Because Bony can use the extra attack power. Okay, so we're on to the last area here. 77 steps. We're good. Because here, we have our main item. The gold teeth. Remember how the warden could not speak at all? Maybe he just needs a, his, his, his uh, pair of dentures. Um, okay, so we should have enough steps. What was that, TM? Ooh, double team. That's a very strong TM. We might use it later. As you can see, a lot of Pokemon can learn it. Um, I think pretty much all Pokemon can learn it. Ah, Skull Bash. We could teach this. It's not a very good move. <laughs> um just because it takes two turns to charge. It's just like you take one turn lowering your head and one turn to hit a really strong like headbutt thing. Um, fun fact, my band Silver Cave actually has a song called Skull Bash. It's not about Pokemon. Um, I just got the name from the Pokemon move, which I thought was fun. Um, it's actually a pretty serious song. Um, so we go in here. This is the secret house of the Safari Zone, and this is the other very important item we need. The secret house. HMO3. Um, and if you remember, it's Surf. Um, yes, we need these HMs to progress through the game. And HMO3 is very important because you can use it to surf on water and to traverse water, um, which is crazy important. As a matter of fact, we're gonna go ahead and teach surf to our water type, Keith Angel. So we're gonna be riding on the water in style on our big bad Gyarados. Um, we already have Bubble Beam and we could get rid of it, but I'm just gonna get rid of Tackle. That's a pretty useless move. Um, Surf is actually, because a lot of TMs, or HMs rather, are not very good moves. Um, but, like Cut, for example, it's just kind of like a semi-weak. There we go, I'm out of steps, so we just made it. So then you're just ex escorted out. Um, you can actually find Scyther in there, which is one of the coolest Gen 1 Pokemon, but... Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. I was saying how, like, Cut, for example, is a pretty weak, um, normal-type move. But, Surf is probably the best water-type move in the game. Um, our Bubble Beam is pretty good. I think it's, like, 60 or 65 power. But Surf is 95 power. Really, really good move. Um, and the only water move stronger is Hydro Pump. But the thing with that is that it's not very accurate. Where Surf is 100% accurate. Ah, so now our Warden can talk! Thanks, kid! No one can understand a word I said! <laughs> Couldn't work that way. <laughs> no one could. So here we get another very important HM. We have HM04. Um, but, uh, sorry. My real life wife, my IRL wife, was texting me. 
teaches strength. Ah, uh, yes, and he'll remind me that we need to go to the secret house to get Surf. Um, but now we have strength. And I think I will probably just end up teaching strength to our friend Hitmonlee, Titus, because he doesn't have very many moves. Um, and he's a real physical attacking Pokemon. So I can show this off here. We use strength, and we can just push that bad boy out of the way, pick up our rare candy. I don't know why this guy has a boulder and hedges in his house, but he does. Um, he's the Safari Zone Warden, I guess. That's just part of the deal. Um, okay, so that's a big thing out of the way. Um, let's just scooch on over to the Pokemon Center here. I hate in Fuchsia City you have to go all the way around this little thing to get to the Pokemon Center. It's actually very annoyingly outlined, this city. Um, okay, so now we have all of those TMs that we don't really need that we can deposit. Um, HMO2 will need still. HMO4 we've taught. HMO3 we've taught. Oops. And these other moves we're probably not going to use. Double Team might come in handy later. Um, it's a really good move. Sorry, I got sidetracked when I was talking about it. Um, it's a really good move that you can use to increase, increase your evasiveness. Um, so that you can uh, kind of cheese battles a little bit. A lot of people don't like to use it when they're playing through. Especially like challenge runners um, because they feel that it kind of like cheapens the game or cheapens the experience when you use it a lot um, because it is very very powerful um, if you abuse it um, so last stream we skipped some trainers on cycling road what I really want to do is I want to beat the next gym, but we're a little bit under leveled for that. So to do that, we're gonna have to fight a few more trainers. So I'm probably gonna go through Cycling Road today and kind of battle all those trainers and see if we can beat the next gym. Um, we'll be very under leveled for that. I think it'll be kind of a fun challenge. But our next gym leader that we're gonna fight is the poison type gym leader there in Fuchsia City. We saw last stream is Koga. And Koga is probably my favorite gym leader in Generation 1. I love him. He's a ninja, which is very cool. And he uses poison types. But his levels are way higher than us at the moment. So we need just a few more levels. The thing here um, with Koga is that he, when we defeat him, is going to give us the ability to use Surf outside of battle. And that will really open up the map for us to where we can go pretty much anywhere. And the first place I want to go is to uh, a place called Cinnabar Island. Um, that's actually where the seventh gym is located, but it is also where the fossil, the Pokemon Fossil Lab is located. And that's going to help us get our last member of the squad. Um, one I've really been kind of like saving up for and holding back. Um, yes, we have our newly evolved Marowak. Um, let's see here. We'll just go into Keith Angel. I can show you Surf. Yeah, that's not going to do much to Gyarados at all. But, whew, it's kind of an extra battle animation. Yeah, very strong move. Um, and this Pokemon is a higher level, and that wasn't even super effective, so Surf is very strong. Um, with that move, Keith Angel probably remains our best Pokemon. Um, yes, we have a lot of bikers up here at the top. 
Now, my dear friend Boney is poisoned, which is very annoying, so hopefully I can one-shot a couple of these. That's great. Because I believe in Generation 1, if you don't... If you one-shot like I just did, you don't actually take the poison damage for that turn. So, that is a very good piece of Gen 1 brokenness that we can <laughs> utilize to our advantage here. Um, and I'm staying in with Boney because Boney is... Uh, Boney's ground moves are super effective against poison types, which Grimer is. Um, let's see. Welcome, if you're just joining us. I'm Trent, Silver Cave Gaming. Playing Pokemon Yellow today. It's lovely. Lovely day. Um, I've actually had a really nice weekend, just as we continue to fight some of these trainers. I don't know if I have... Oh, yeah! I meant to show this off last stream. We have this beautiful little trainer card that shows all the badges that we've earned. And there we have Koga, Sabrina, Blaine, and then a mystery as the eighth gym leader. Um, but those are the four badges we've earned so far. Boulder, Cascade, Thunder, and Rainbow Badge, um, which is super cool. I love this little trainer card layout. I think it looks awesome. Um, but... Oh yeah, I was looking to see if I had an antidote or a full heal, maybe. There might actually be full heals in Fuchsia City. I'm gonna have a look. Um, yeah, because this is gonna hurt just going down Cycling Road all poisoned like this, but I have some potions that I can heal with. Um, but yeah, my weekend's been really good. My dad and I actually went on a really cool trip yesterday. There we go. Um, we went to a place called Sweetwater. It's a music store. Um, I live in Ohio, and Sweetwater is in a place called Fort Wayne, Indiana, if you're not familiar. And it's about two hours away from where my parents live. So I had to drive up to where my parents live, and then my dad and I drove to Fort Wayne because we had this really cool, awesome day where he was getting himself a really nice guitar and amp from this music store. And he was just like, I want to get you something. I had like a really nice year this year at work, and I want to get my son something. And I'm like... That is really nice of you, Dad. I am a grown man. I can buy my own things, but I really appreciate this gesture. Um, <laughs> so we went to Sweetwater, and we, my dad got a sweet guitar. Um, he actually has a really hard time finding guitars that he likes because he's left-handed. And they don't really make uh, that many good options for left-handers staying in with my wife here. Oh yeah, nice critical hit. Thank you, thank you, wife. Um, and, but his guitar that he got is so awesome. And I also got a new guitar that I'm really excited about. Um, I think it'll be a really, really good kind of companion to the guitar that I have now. They're both they're both kind of similar, but this new one that I got has a bit of a different flavor than my current guitar, which is really cool. But yeah, it was a really special day. We had a really nice time, really nice uh, father-son bonding time. And I was, ooh, acid, this is nice. Um, this is a poison move. I'll get a wrap. I know Generation 1 rap can be kind of broken, but it's okay. I don't really care about it that much. And my wife is part poison type, so it can actually get the same type attack bonus for that move. Um, so here, I'm going to swap in. I'm probably going to leave Birdie, because Birdie's actually not going to be on the squad for too terribly much longer. Um, and I'm kind of focusing in on training... Bony, because yeah, I fought him already. Oh yeah, there's nothing in the middle there. I'm focusing in on training Bony because oh nice, I can probably one shot a lot of these. 
Boney's going to be super effective against the next gym leader, Koga. And that'll be really helpful. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to one-shot a Weezing. Okay, yeah, because even Thunderbolt doesn't one-shot it. Weezing's pretty tanky. Um, it's been annoying being poisoned this whole time, but... Um, but yeah, had a great day yesterday. And I haven't really been seeing my parents a ton lately, so... It was, it was nice to see them. And today's just been a lot of running errands. Um, getting the groceries and getting things going for the week. It was kind of lame because for two weeks in a row here in Ohio, we got a lot of snow, but we got it on Friday night. Um, and if you haven't heard me say before, I work in a school, so... I would love to have a snow day, um, but we didn't get the opportunity, which was fine. See, since I didn't one-shot there, I actually take the poison damage. Um, Sludge is the best poison move in the game, but or the strongest attacking poison move in the game, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. I think when they designed Generation 1 here, um, they were like, okay, we're not going to make poison moves very strong, but they will all have a chance to poison. Um, and I think that was kind of like the de design philosophy there. Sorry, I'm going to use speed up. Because when you go up north on cycling road like that, um, it actually is slower because it's like you're going uphill. That's kind of the what they're trying to accomplish there. Um, uh, yes, focus energy. It famously does not work in Generation 1. Um, let me use Dragon Rage. So that Primeape essentially threw the fight. And that's just something you see a lot in Gen 1. I mean, we've seen it a lot already. I'll get Birdie in here. I don't want to completely forget about Birdie. Especially because Fly is still very useful against fighting types. Because Flying is super effective, as you can see. I love that. But seeing some of these battle animations um, reminds me that I am really excited to show you all Generation 2. Um, because as I've described... Generation 2 is um, my favorite. The Johto games I love, love, love and adore. Um, and I remember... If, if any of you are my age, they used to have these things in Walmart. I, I think they still have them. I mean, not for this specific thing, but... Where you can demo games. And in my Walmart, there was a Game Boy Color, kind of like onto like a little arm that you could play, and it had Pokemon Silver in there, and I booted that up, and when I played for the first time, they had, you know, revamped a lot of stuff, redesigned a lot of stuff, the graphics were way better, and the new battle animations, like this, like that's a battle animation, and like Surf here, like that's the battle animation, um, there were the new battle animations completely blew my mind. And I was like, this is the coolest, most high-tech thing I have ever seen. Um, now video games are like mega super hyper, mega super hyper? <laughs> mega super hyper realistic. Um, let's see what Mega Drain can do. Oh boy. We've seen self-destruct before. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, yeah! My wife is strong! Um, so yes, we'll keep... Oh, wow, there's even more guys. Ah, Doduo. Fun fact. Doduo. There are a lot of just kind of like normal flying bird Pokemon. Doduo is one of them. And also Spearow and Pidgey, which we've seen. Um, 
But ooh, my team is kind of kind of hurting a little bit. Um, I will keep Keith Angel in, but I am gonna save to fight these guys. Um, Doduo is probably the best one uh, because it evolves into Dodrio, like like Dotrio, because Doduo has two heads and Dodrio has three. Um, but uh, it's actually ridiculously powerful. It's too powerful, honestly. Um, all right, let's see. For Primeape, let's see if Birdie can get one more knockout here. I am at half health. Oh, crap. Okay, Primeape again is just going to keep using focus energy and not working. There we go. Got a nice critical hit there. Um... But yeah, Do Duo and Dodrio are probably the best of the three like normal bird Pokemon you can get. So I I recommend if you are playing through this game yourself, um, that is definitely a consideration there. Like you can find them here on Cycling Road, and you can find them right outside of Celadon City, where the Snorlax was. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of cool things and cool Pokemon I want to show off to you guys as I stream this, but uh, you know, I can't show off everything. Okay, joke. Let's let's bring in Titus. We'll do fighting against fighting. Yes. I love Hitmonlee. Oh, one of my favorite Pokemon ever. Um... When I would run this game, oh boy, uh, that is one thing about Hitmonlee, he doesn't take damage very well. Um, we're gonna have to switch. We'll go back to Keith Angel. There we go. Sorry if you guys don't love speed up, it just kind of helps the battles go along a little bit. I try not to abuse it, just kind of, um, like just kind of get through those little tedious parts a little quicker um okay so that should be all of our trainers here on cycling road so we are just gonna yeah we're hurting a little bit we're gonna fly back to fuchsia and there are a couple battles right here outside of fuchsia that we can utilize and they all have bird pokemon so this is gonna be the time for eve to shine Um, I'll actually save. Wow, we've been at this for 11 hours. Time flies. Time flies when you're having a great time. You know? It really does, though. That is one thing about video games, especially ones that I love. The time just melts away. Positively melts away. Um... And I try to keep these episodes about an hour a piece, and I could just, I could just go on forever. I really could. Um, this should absolutely one-shot a Spiro. Yes, love to see it. Um, I'm hoping some of these people have some Fero. This is going to be Spiro's evolved form. Ooh, I love that sprite. So many great yellow sprites. It looks so regal. Um. Jolteon's gonna clean house on these guys. Um, ooh, oh, double kick, nice. Um, double kick is a fighting move. Jolteon's not gonna be able to make too great of use of double kick, but I think it could be a good little bit of coverage. Um, I'm gonna get rid of sand attack. Because if I really want Eve to have a move that deals with evasion, I'll just teach it double team from that TM that we got. Um, and it's it's always nice to have that little bit of type coverage. Um, okay, we have some weaker, yeah, we have some weaker ones. Because my wife is going to be weak to flying, but I think since it's a weaker Pokemon at a lower level, we should be able to... Oh yeah, this is going to be great. Should be able to knock out a couple of these Spiro. Mm 
Um, type coverage. Ooh, mirror move. How fun. Okay, yeah, it's not very effective in this game. The type kind of matchup chart is a little bit wonky in this game as compared to modern Pokemon, so sometimes I'm not sure. Because in a normal game, that would be just regular effective because poison is good against grass but bad against poison, so that equals medium or normal damage. Um, but here, in Generation 1, it only takes into account the poison against poison for some reason. Um, just another one of those weird little Gen 1 quirks, baby. Oh, but like I was saying, uh, when you talk about a Pokemon's coverage on their moveset, it just means, like, moves that are not of their type, that they can utilize to maybe cover some, uh, weaknesses they might have. Like, for example, Jolteon. Um, Jolteon's an electric type, and electric moves cannot damage ground types. Um, but a lot of the ground types in this game are also rock type, and double kick is good against rock types. So while it's not going to be able to do a ton of damage, Jolteon will at least be able to damage or cover some of those uh, types that it's weak against. Um, and when you get into kind of like the modern meta of everything, have all these bird keepers over here. Um, ah, there's Dodrio. Dodrio is a ridiculously powerful Pokemon. It looks just like a weird ostrich, but honestly, it's one of the best Pokemon in the game. And I am getting Wife out of here because he's not going. She's not going to be able to take it. Um, but Thunderbolt should still be able to make pretty quick work of Dodrio, especially because it, it wasted its turn using Growl. There we go, Wife. All right, Wife needs to grow eight more levels and then she'll be able to evolve. I cannot wait. I simply cannot wait. Okay. Ah, and there is a Fero. Yeah, I forgot there are wild Fero out here. Um, but as you can see now, the, oh shoot. The levels are gonna be, there we go, a little bit um, lower than our level. Cause there kind of gets to a certain point in the game where the wild Pokemon's level is really gonna hang out around like high 20s, low 30s, and that's probably about as high a level of a wild Pokemon as you're gonna be able to obtain. Um, and that kind of makes it a bit harder to add team members as you get later in the game. Um, so here, I'm gonna go into Keith Angel because there, this first trainer in here has a notoriously powerful single Pokemon. And I'm probably gonna need my best member. Now, every gym is different. This one is interesting because there are invisible walls in Koga's gym that you have to traverse. But if you look carefully, if you look carefully, there are little dots on the floor and that's kind of how you can see where the wall is. So when you first walk in, you're like, whoa, why can't I just walk straight to him? But there's those dots there that show the invisible wall. Oh, this actually isn't even the trainer I was talking about. Um, but yeah, they're at like, kind of like mid thirties, kind of like mid to high thirties right now. Um, uh, yes, jugglers famously, ooh, Kadabra. Kadabra is one of the better Pokemon in the game. However, when it uses Recover on its first turn, that's very stupid. And again, just another AI quirk. Because Recover raises your HP. It heals you. And when you're at full health, why would you use Recover? Ah, yes. Wife can come in and get the kill. But Drowsy's Psychic type is actually good against uh, my wife's Poison type. All right, so here's the guy I was talking about. Um, it's actually funny because I'm talking about how this is a poison gym, um, but these first couple trainers actually have psychic types. Um, such a great sprite, a great cry that is really like creepy. Um, and yes, 
Even though Hypno is a psychic type, it can use poison gas, which is why you'll find it in this gym. Um, oh wow, that was a critical hit. And I believe this Pokemon knows Psychic. Yes, Psychic is the most powerful Psychic move in the game. And yeah, does a lot of damage, especially when it's a freaking critical hit like that. Um, yeah, and that poison will probably knock out Keith Angel. Yeah, yeah this Hypno is really strong, but I think we should be fine. I'm going to see if Titus can knock it out. Hopefully I'll be faster, but we'll see. No, I was not. Okay, good. Psychic would have destroyed my Hitmonlee, but he decided not to use it, so that makes me really happy. Oh no! Maybe I'll use it now. Yeah. This will be a one-shot on good old Hitmonlee. And this is something you can kind of encounter when you're here in the middle of the game. I'm actually going to use Birdie because I have Quick Attack, and that'll always outspeed and just knock it out. That is a great use of Quick Attack. When you have him just down to a sliver and you just need something weak that can outspeed really quick, Quick Attack. Always very useful in a playthrough. Um, but yeah, very strong Hypno there. And um, yeah, as I was saying, when you get to kind of this middle part of the game, you can kind of go into different... Um, into different areas where you could be like over prepared or under prepared for. Um, and in this case, we're just a little bit under leveled. Oops, I did not mean to challenge that guy so quickly. But I believe he has a lot of drowsies and cadavers as well, like that first guy. But yeah, this guy, since he has a lot more Pokemon, his level is a bit more on par with ours. Okay, good. Disable did not work. And. Why I'm using Bite instead of, like, Surf, for example, they would probably do comparable damage, but a lot of Psychic types are weaker on the physical defense side. So I want to use a physical move like Bite versus a special move like um, Surf. Yes, and that defense drop will actually be really important. And his Poison Gas won't affect Wife because Wife is poison type. But two acids usually wouldn't kill Drowsy, but since it lowered its defense, the acid can now kill Drowsy. Um, let's see. It sounds like my wife's home. I'll talk to her in a little bit when we're done streaming. Um, I am going to switch out here because Kadabra will kill my wife super hard. I am going to see if I can outspeed it with Hitmonlee though, because Hitmonlee has really good attack. Uh, nope, Psybeam is going to kill Hitmonlee. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking such a big game on Hitmonlee, but I just don't have good matchups for him right now. Um, let's do Bony. See, again, another first turn recover. Very stupid. Um, see, now it's smart for him to use recover. And yes, um, so Psychic type is really, really powerful and has really high special, but kind of, again, the design philosophy, I use that term a lot, um, is they made the psychic type Abracadabra Alakazam line, they made them very powerful, but they gave them a key weakness in their physical defense. Oh, don't do acid. Okay, good. This should kill it. Great. Love to see it. Um, okay. So, we're about 40 minutes into the stream. I gotta go heal Hitmonlee, my bum Hitmonlee. Yeah, once once he sees some better matchups, Hitmonlee will uh, earn, his, earn his spot on the squad. Um, but I'm gonna fight some of the trainers in this gym. And my goal for today, I want to get through Koga so we can surf and I can kind of show that to you. Um, and then maybe we can get to Cinnabar Island. And that'll be our stopping point for today. Um, because there's a lot of, like, cleanup that we can still do. Ninjas have a long history of using animals. Oh, yeah, because this guy's like a tamer. Um, one thing that Arbok can do that's really annoying is paralyze you. It has a move called Glare. Oh, yeah, that might hurt a little bit. 
Um, oh yeah, I think this guy might have, yes, he's got a sand slash. So I'm gonna let my wife have some time to shine. Because while Sand Slash is a ground type, it does have the poison move poison sting. However, for my wife, it's very weak. Oh, I hate that though. Yeah, very weak moves on Sand Slash here. Even though, again, just a sick design, a sick sprite. Really cool Pokemon. There we go, wife. Speaking of snakes, would you rather... <laughs> Uh, okay, so we just got asked, would you rather be stuck in a mall with one gorilla or five black mambas? Um, now, it's interesting. I have a very healthy fear of gorillas because they are so strong. Um, there's Glare. Paralyzed us, which is very, very annoying to me. Um... Fully paralyzed, yeah. And bite can flinch, okay, good. So if I was stuck in a small space, I think I would rather have the Black Mambas um, just because the gorilla is so strong and I don't want to be in like close quarters with a gorilla like that. Um, so it looks like we gotta fight two more trainers here. Let's let's see if Titus can can do something. Actually, we only have to fight one more. We'll just fight one more. We have enough experience now. Um, but, if it was a whole mall, like you're asking, I would probably pick the gorilla. Because gorilla could probably get distracted with stuff. It's very easy to track. It... Oh, this drowsy nose psychic? Gosh, Titus just can't catch a break. Just kill me. Um... But the Black Mambas, if you are in an entire big mall, the Black Mambas can be a lot more sneaky. They can hide in the walls, they can hide... I know, poor Titus, I know. I keep just trying to use them against the Psychic types and it just keeps not working. <laughs> um, let's... we'll keep Birdie in here. We'll see what Birdie can do against Hypno. Um, but yeah, the Black Mambas in the in the whole mall scenario can be very sneaky. Oh no. Okay, good. Held on to 3 HP. Love to see it. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, Birdie's not going to be able to survive this. Sorry, Birdie. Let's bring in... Yeah, these Hypnos are giving us a little bit of issue. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I'd probably pick the Black Mambas. By a hair. For the whole mall, the Black Mambas, for a small space, or sorry, for a whole mall, the Gorilla, for a small space, the Black Mambas. But I have a very healthy fear of animals in general. Any animal that can hurt me, I will stay as far away from you as I possibly can. Um, I don't really care to ever go to Australia for that reason. So many big, scary, or killer animals. Um, and one thing about living in Ohio that is wonderful is that they just don't really have a lot of those kinds of animals. And I love that. I'm a big proponent of safety. So here is our boy Koga, one of my favorite gym leaders in the whole franchise. I'm going to try to use Titus. <laughs> Let's see if he dies first thing. Koga's levels are really high. Safety does rock, thank you, for this point in the game. Because... He uses an anime-inspired team that actually uses really weak Pokemon. His team in this game is not very good. He has way better teams in other games. But he's still my favorite design-wise. So um, I don't remember if I saved. So here we go. <laughs> a mere child like you dares to challenge me. Very well. I shall show you true terror as a ninja master. You shall feel the despair of poison and sleep technique. Yeah, Koga's a sneaky, sneaky fella. And here it is again. Thank you. Yes, so Koga has three Venonats. 
which is very silly because Venonat is not a good Pokemon. But I think these might know Psychic. <laughs> Don't die, Titus. Just hold on one time. Can you hold on one time? Venonat's really weak. Poor guy. I just keep using him in the wrong time. Yeah, but as you can see, it's at level 44. We are at level 31. This is gonna be a tough, tough proposition. Um, Birdie is super effective, and Venonats are very slow. Oh boy. Um, so hopefully we can utilize this with Fly here. Okay, X attack doesn't affect Psychic. Um, even though it is a very powerful move. Okay, good. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Um, let's see if Quick Attack kills it. I really hope it does. That would be so lovely. It didn't. That makes me sad a lot. Um, that was my mistake. Okay. So here comes Venonat number two. It is two levels higher. Um, it has another, he has another Venonat at level four. 48, and then finally, a Venomoth at level 50. And Venomoth is what uh, Venonat evolves into. And oddly, they don't really use, um, what you call it, poison moves. They use psychic moves for the most part. Um, okay, I'm going to save Keith, Angel, and Eve for the Venomoth. I'm going to see if Boney can come in here and do some cleanup. Because I actually don't know if ground is super effective against bug in this game. Okay, good. Okay, that still didn't do a whole lot, though. Unfortunately, Boney's special isn't very good, so it's probably not going to be able to take the psychic very well. Okay, about half. Okay. It is weird that he's using X attacks on... I feel like bugs do pretty well on ground. You are correct. Do a lot of digging and building houses in the ground. Um, so here is his third Venonat. I... Okay, great to see that. Um, trying to put me to sleep. Uh, we're not as lucky that time. At least we were able to get one off. Oh, Double Edge. Interesting. Double Edge is like Tackle, but way more powerful. And it actually hurts the user. Um, so even though this will kill Boney, it'll still do a little more damage to Venonat there. Um, I, I am loving this, though. This is a really good fight. Um, I'm gonna see if we can put Venonat to sleep. Toxic. It doesn't affect Wife because it's a poison move. Um, Toxic is a very special move. Don't kill me! Good. Yes, okay. So now that Venonat's asleep, we're gonna go into Eve. Um to try to just kind of brute force it with some Thunderbolts. Okay, good. X attack. It's not even using attacking moves, so that's fine. Um, toxic is a really cool move because it poisons the opponent, but instead of just doing a set amount of damage each turn, that damage actually stacks. So the more turns that you are affected by the poison damage, the more damage it does. Um, so you can really use it to kind of like slowly seep away your uh, opponent's HP like very exponentially, which is really cool. So here we have Venomoth. Um, I'm going to stay in. I'm actually going to try to paralyze Venomoth oh. with Thunder Wave. See, I just got hit with Toxic here. And if I leave Eve in, there we go. So I got the paralysis on Venomoth. So from here on for the rest of the battle, we should be more... Uh, we should be faster than Venomoth. Um, I'm going to get Wife in here. Wife probably won't be able to do much. Um, but I want to... Oh, that's super effective in this game. I forgot. And, and for some reason, Venomoth is just trying to use Toxic, which does not affect my wife. Fully paralyzed. Let's do this, wife. Come on. <laughs> this would be so great. Um, fully paralyzed again. Let's go. This will be so amazing. 
Um, it just keeps using toxic. <laughs> Let's go! I think my wife's gonna be able to do it. Critical hit! Let's do it! Defense fell! Toxic! Come on! One more acid should do it! Oh, oh no! It was a critical hit! Critical hits don't- Okay, toxic again, we're good. Critical hits don't account for defense drops. Oh my gosh, that was so great. It probably could have just killed us in one psychic so easily, but it just let my wife, my wife, my beautiful, powerful, strong wife, defeated the level 50 Venomoth. See you later, Koga. Mm. Love that, that was so fun. The defense of your Pokemon increases. It also lets you use Surf outside of Lady Power, that's right, outside of battle. And that is exactly why we wanted to beat Koga. Um, and as you can see, the AI can be really bad. And that is how we were able to beat Kogo with way lower levels than him. Um, secret technique, over 400 years old. Um, so we did not even need to use Keith Angel in that battle. Okay, so we are coming up on um, an hour for the stream. As we kind of get going through the game here, I'm kind of taking a weird winding path to help us get our last team member as early as possible. Um, but again, in this middle part of the game, you can really do a lot of things. You can do stuff in Saffron City, you can do stuff here, you can get Surf and go to Cinnabar Island as early as you want, which is kind of the route that we're taking. Um, um, hold on, let me just deposit Toxic really quick. go. So, here what we're going to do, if you see where my bird is now, that's Pallet Town, that's where we started, we need to sw uh, surf south on the sea there to get to Cinnabar Island. So, we are just going to fly over here, oh, back where we started. And that's something cool, because you're just like, oh wow, this is where we started, and now we are going to uh, access this area that we did not have access to. So what I'm going to do is I want us to get to Cinnabar Island uh, to close this stream. There are going to be a lot of trainers on this route that I'm going to try to skip, because I want you guys to see Cinnabar Island before we end here. Dun. Yeah, every Pokemon looks like this when you surf on them, no matter what. Because we're surfing on a Gyarados right now, and it does not look like this. Um, surf music is wonderful. I'm swimming off to the side here. Because there will be other swimmers in the water that we can battle. And we'll battle a lot of those, especially to get Jolteon's level up a little bit. But I'm staying off to the side here, so I don't have to battle. See, there's a guy. Cute swimming, I know. I love this music. Ah, so here we are. Wonderful. Um, Cinnabar Island, the fiery town of burning desire. Um, in the anime, this place has a um, volcano in it, but in the game, they just couldn't do that. <laughs> um, and that's actually a big plot point in the Generation 2 games. But this is a very important building, and we are going to visit that building in the next stream. Um, because here, the door is locked. Why is the door locked to the Pokemon Gym? That's something we'll find out next stream as well. But for the last thing that we do in this stream, I want to show you, I believe it's the third door here. The Pokemon Lab testing room. I think it's in here. Yes. Hiya! I am important doctor. I study here rare Pokemon fossils. You, you have a fossil for me? We do. The old amber. Aerodactyl. A Pokemon that is already extinct. My resurrection machine will make that Pokemon live again. Uh, yeah. That sounds great. Okay, so we're gonna go for just a little walk. And by go for a little walk, I think we literally just have to leave the building and come back. I'm pretty sure that's all we have to do. Um, 
so let's talk to this guy again. Where were you? Yep. Your fossil is back to life. It was Aerodactyl-like, I think. <laughs> so, oh yeah, do we have a nickname for like a super scary, awesome Pterodactyl Pokemon? Paul Meskel's wife, I think, if you're there. Um, yes, we definitely want to give a nickname. Um, it's so funny that it shows up as like a bird. It is any copter. Oh, love it. Copter. Copter the Aerodactyl. Yeah, so Aerodactyl is going to be in our PC. So we're going to go grab. We're going to go grab Aerodactyl. And we're going to say goodbye to Birdie. Um, Birdie has done a, a valiant job. But Aerodactyl is one of the like strongest, most awesome Pokemon in the game. And I want to show show them off to you. Ooh, just listen to that cry. So here is Aerodactyl. Ooh, look at that sprite. So cool. Yeah, right now it only knows wing attack and agility. Um, this is why I held on to fly, because we're actually going to teach Copter Fly. There we go. And I'm going to throw this back in the PC real quick. No, not a Pokeball. There we go. Next stream, we'll probably do some shopping and kind of revamp the bag a little bit. But here is the squad. This is kind of the squad that we'll probably have through the end of the game. Uh, the only thing left to do is evolve my wife, which I'm really excited to do. Um, we'll probably leave Cinnabar Island next stream. We'll have like a lot of kind of leveling up to do, a lot of kind of battling the last gyms, and there is another big Team Rocket section to get through, um, which will be very exciting. But um, for now, we're going to call it. Um, got this right under an hour. Love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I love playing this game. I love streaming it out and showing it off. It makes me so, so happy. Um, again, if you want to check out any of these after the fact or catch up on where we are now in the game, um, I'm also Silver Cave Gaming on YouTube, so you can watch all of the streams there. I have them in full there. Um, it's great background noise when you're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> um, but with that, thanks so much, folks. I will see you next time.